Ten seconds now. Live in three, two, one. Welcome to the heart of innovation. 60 minutes that could save life and limb with new breakthrough ideas and innovation changing the healthcare landscape. Brought to you by Patient Advocacy Group, the Global PAD Association at padhealth.org in partnership with Reflow Medical, the pulse of medical ingenuity. Here are your hosts for the heart of innovation, Emmy award-winning journalist and founder of the Global PAD Association, Kim McNicholas and interventional cardiologist and founder of Save My Piggies Health and Wellness. Dr. John Dr. Phillips. Dr. John yes. Phillips. Ooh. <laughs> Welcome to the show today. It's such a special day because we are celebrating the start of year three for the Heart of Innovation and my partnership with Dr. John Phillips. You know, we started this incredible journey in 2022 to raise awareness for cardiovascular and vascular diseases, especially peripheral artery disease, you hear us talk about it a lot, which is restricted blood flow in mainly the leg arteries. We couldn't have done it so far without the amazing support Cardiovascular Systems Incorporated, which merged with Abbott last year, and our amazing champion there, Jim Wilson, who supported us our very first two years and going into year three, oh my goodness, I thought it would come to an end. But an amazing group of humans dedicated to helping patients with the most advanced stage of peripheral artery disease, known as critical limb ischemia or critical limb threatening ischemia, stepped up in a very big way to carry us forward. And in just a few moments, you are going to hear who they are, in case you didn't catch it in the opening of the show. And we're also going to hear about their groundbreaking technology that they're manufacturing to help save life and limb. Now, I'll also tell you about during this show, my visit to their manufacturing facility this week, where I got to meet the passionate, very passionate limb saving engineers and their teams and see how their technology is actually made, which I know, I know this for sure. It made Dr. Phillips jealous. I saw many of his peers on their wall of visitors, from Dr. Peter Sukas from Maine to Dr. Kevin Herman from New Jersey, even Dr. Jay Matthews, who our patients call Dr. Miracle. He's in Florida, but John, you know what? I hear that you are next. So a trip to Southern California is in your near future, I think. What do you think? That'd be, that Kim, that'd be pretty sweet. Happy uh, Saturday. Uh, I'm looking forward to to kicking off this partnership with Reflow Medical. I've worked with them for for quite a while. They not only do great things, but I think they are very much patient centered and focused, uh, which is is paramount when you um, take on this task of treating people with peripheral arterial disease and critical limb ischemia. So I definitely need to get out there. I'm looking forward to helping them with some training and things of that nature. So yeah, it's a great partnership. Really appreciate their stepping up to help us out because. Obviously, you feel very passionate about this. I feel very passionate about this, but we can't do it without sponsor support because, uh, you know, I initially thought there was money to be made in doing radio and podcasts, but unless if you're the Kelsey brothers, really not, huh? <laughs> not really. And it's, we, we could sell, in a sense, the commercial spots in our show, um, you know, to allow for other companies to come in and do commercials. But the reason that I... And, you know, I'm in partnership with KDOW is because I like the fact that, that we do have more control. Yes, they have um, a certain set of spots that they can actually sell to keep their lights on and to keep the electricity flowing and the um, airwaves going for us to be broadcast on. Um, but they also allow us to have some commercial spots as well. And we decided that we would rather use those educational spots for opportunities or the commercial spots. <laughs> I gave that away for educational opportunities. And you'll see as part of this new series um, that we have multiple education spots. Um, our, our big goal in this is to really raise awareness for cardiovascular and vascular diseases, particularly you know, one that is more prevalent and deadlier than most cancers combined, and yet is one of the most underdiagnosed, most prevalent diseases that so many have never heard of. They did a poll recently 
And they found that more than 70% of Americans don't know the, the term peripheral artery disease. They don't even know what it is. And we talk it, about it all the time here, which is the restricted blood flow in the legs. And what people don't know is that, you know, so many people are getting their symptoms brushed off as neuropathy. I had a gentleman call me yesterday, John, and he was saying, yeah, I just got diagnosed with um, peripheral artery disease last week. But, you know, I, I know I have peripheral neuropathy, so I'm not sure how much my pain is going to get better by doing your walking program. And I said, I, you know, I'm sure, you know, you're here. Obviously you have narrowing your arteries. I would imagine a good, a good amount of that neuropathy is due to poor circulation. And that is the number two on our list. Number one on our list in terms of misdiagnosis in our group in particular is back problems, sciatica. And while you may have back problems in sciatica, it might not be the reason that, or the main reason that you are experiencing pain, especially while you're walking. So number one is back and sciatica pain. That's the number one misdiagnosis for peripheral artery disease. And number two is really that diabetic neuropathy or neuropathy. Some say, some brush it off as old age. They say you're old, you might have arthritis, you might have fibromyalgia, but it's really PAD. And so a lot of our segments, the, the first commercial is describing what is peripheral artery disease? You're going to hear that in every single show. Um, Colin, our producer, just voiced that commercial for us, which I think you'll hear coming up. I'm really excited about um, and very thankful that he voiced that commercial for us. And he has and a very good did voice. One. He's got that voice, too. He's got a voice, too. I like yes. that, right? We love it. And I've been waiting for another opportunity to use it. Now we have it. And John, you also did our other educational spot. And this is the very first one that we have for doctors. And it's called The Pulse, if you want to describe what that one's all about. So, yeah, that, that's kind of just a 60-second little snippet about a, a case uh, that a particular physician did. This was, this was mine. And uh, really, it was kind of a learning opportunity. So I, I kind of share, we would call it a vignette. We talk a little bit about patient's history, why they're coming for procedure, the procedure itself. And then, in this case, I shared a, a complication that... Um, uh, you know, it wasn't uh, catastrophic, but it, it definitely changed the, the course uh, of, of that patient's treatment plan. So hopefully we can, with this new season, we can have more physicians listening in and, and sharing sharing their cases. I know I have several of my partners that are interested in, in doing that as well. But Kim, do you know what else I have? I know we only have a minute to break. I am sitting here with my nurse practitioner, Brittany, who is um, working, she works hand in hand with us in the hospital. And uh, hopefully in the next segment, she can share a story um, that we were able to, I think, hopefully help save a limb today uh, with a patient um, using hyperbaric treatment that we typically don't do on the weekend. So really looking forward to sharing Brittany, or talking about Brittany, talking with Brittany, and then sharing that story. That will be coming up next. And one of the commercial breaks that we have coming up as well is an educational segment additionally for patients because walking is the best medicine. And so every single week, a segment that John actually named is called Go With The Flow. So you'll be hearing the very first um, episode of that coming up later on in the broadcast during our commercial break as well. So hopefully commercial breaks will be just as educational as our regular show as well. We'll see you in just a moment, everybody. So stay with us right here on KDOW. We'll be back with Brittany. Leg health can indicate risk for heart attack, stroke, and amputation. So, if you have leg pain or leg cramps while walking, get checked for peripheral artery disease, or PAD. PAD is a buildup mainly in the leg arteries. Be sure to ask your physician for an ankle brachial index, also called an ABI test, where they use blood pressure cuffs to analyze the blood pressure in Hi, Brittany, your legs. Thank you. They discover you yes. have Hi. arterial plaque so, that is Yay, so I'm going to let John to feet, just go ahead and, um, and, and a regimented and jump in and program, our frontline treatment. I'm excited. I the appreciate PAD you, you in jumping in here. Yes, it's uh, very impromptu, which is what we like. So uh, Brittany, Kim, Kim, Brittany, Kim is uh, my co-host. She is basically started what used to be the, well, you've seen some of these, the heart of innovation, but uh, now it is the Global PAD Association, really an advocacy um, platform for patients with PAD. And I'd love for Brittany just to kind of uh, share her experience as a nurse practitioner working with us, but also 
share the story about uh, a particular patient today that I hopefully we can we haven't saved her we weren't able to save her piggies but hopefully we can we can save her leg so and Brittany has a wealth of experience she's been with us 10 years now almost 10 and she um, certainly is um, capable of, of sharing said story on the air live <laughs> I I'm think kidding. this will be really, really fun. I'm really excited about it. This will be cool. Plus, um, if I get called in because I'm on call, <laughs> I'm, she, <laughs> she can cover for me for a few minutes. <laughs> that would be awesome. So, Brittany, it might be you and I co-hosting co later on in the show. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, folks. We got about 15 seconds till we air. Are we doing uh, the uh, moment of inspiration? Oh, you want to do? I'll let you open up. Can you do hard? Uh, can you do inspiration right out? Yes, I can. You're the best. I got rid of my gum. Good call. Sorry, not used to being on the air. Hey, I'm 1220 KDOW. Welcome back to The Heart of Innovation. For more on today's topic, go to theheartofinnovation.org. That's theheartofinnovation.org. Once again, here's Emmy Award-winning journalist Kim McNicholas and interventional cardiologist Dr. John Phillips. Dr. John Phillips, spectacular, vascular moment of inspiration. So Brittany's probably, I don't know, she's probably never heard that, or maybe she has. Um, but so today's moment of inspiration, I was thinking about what happened August 31st throughout, you know, the, the, the span of time. And today, in 1997, Princess Di was killed in that car accident. And I know she was uh, very much a humanitarian and um, I think loved helping people. So I was looking for an, an inspirational quote from her. And I found one that I think dovetails into what we try to do, Brittany tries to do, all of our team tries to do, you try to do on a daily basis. But, you know, sometimes we lose sight of that, you know, the forest for the trees things when you get um, consumed with other uh, external forces that we have in the hospital etc. And so I like this quote, and it's pretty simple, but I think it's poignant. So Princess Di is quoted as saying, anywhere I see suffering, that is where I want to be doing what I can. And, um, you know, you're out there doing what you can, Kim, as is Douglas and the rest of the crew. We're here in the hospital doing what we can to ease suffering. And I think that's probably one of the top things you should think about as a physician or a um, nurse practitioner or anybody taking care of people, your probably your number one goal is to ease their intermittent suffering or the their immediate suffering, I should say. And the rest of it kind of falls into place. So anyway, I thought that was an interesting quote. Unfortunately, she died now, um, you know, what, 1997, so quite a few years ago. But I think that quote still rings true today. And I find it's exactly right that the number one thing to help ease suffering is love. It's, it's knowing someone actually cares, um, feeling heard. In the moment that you as a doctor or Brittany, you as a clinician, um, the moment that you have an interaction with a patient and you just look them in the eye and you, eyes and you say, I hear you, I feel you. And I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do everything in my, that means the world to them that little glimpse of hope, that little glimpse, that little feeling of love can go such a long way. So it's, it, it's amazing. I, I just honor you guys for, for what you do and especially how you do it. And I hear that you have a story um, of a patient, right? Right now that yes, you did. They did have to lose their piggies, but throughout the process, you're able to really be with that patient and give them so much love and care every step of the way in order to help them heal and, and get as, as much back on their feet as they can and live a better quality of life. You want to go ahead and share some of that story? So I'll just say that, Brittany, as you listen to this show, you'll realize a couple of things. Number one, uh, Kim has a much better personality, radio voice, face for TV, et cetera, than I do. And she's, she's fantastic at, at, at asking questions and, 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 and opening, having open-ended questions and bringing in segues. So share the story with us if you don't mind, but just give us like a little bit about your background and why you do what you do and, and then why you kind of went the extra mile today, which is what you, you clearly did. Sure. 
Um, so I've been with this group. This has been my only nurse practitioner gig since I graduated in 2016. And I started here actually before I even passed my boards. Um, never really had an understanding or passion for vascular until I met these physicians and the team here at Riverside. Um, they all took me under their wing, um, trained and taught, and I observed, obviously, through experience and patients alike, um, how to identify vascular disease, and then more importantly, how to have that bedside manner. I've modeled my interactions with patients based off of Dr. Phillips and his partners and how they educate and interact, and that's kind of what I've done throughout my career. Um, speaking more specifically about today's scenario, this patient has a longstanding history of both vascular disease and pretty significant kidney dysfunction. And with those two things together, it creates this perfect storm, as you all know, for um, calcific areas of disease in the lower leg. And so she's had quite a go at it over the last seven to eight months. Her daughter actually is also a nurse practitioner. She works here, I believe, or somewhere she used to work here. So there's an understanding within the family of um, these complex medical issues, and her daughter is a really um, good advocate for her. But we first were introduced to her back in January when she had some small ulcers on her toes that we treated conservatively for a while. They continued to progress in spite of our best efforts. And then Dr. Phillips revascularized in a very complex manner, one of her below the knee arteries just about a month or so ago. Um, and then unfortunately she had suffered some other cardiac complications, um, that laid her up in the hospital and ulcers progressed again. And ultimately she required some digital amputations that quickly failed as in a matter of, I think like four days ago, she had some digital amputations and then those quickly became ischemic. We offered hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which not a lot of people know about. And it's one of my personal passions since joining this team. Um, it's a really nice adjunct to have on a vascular service line like this, where we work closely with our podiatrists who often are the bulk of our referral base um, for patients that uh, meet the criteria for hyperbarics. And one of the probably most beneficial indications for it is what we call ischemic flap failure, which is exactly what this lady suffered from a couple of days ago. And so we urgently did one treatment just to see if we could try to hyperoxygenate that tissue and reverse the damage. Um, but unfortunately, it was too far gone, and she did require the transmetatarsal amputation, which she had yesterday. Um, the transmetatarsal amputation is is getting rid of all the toes. All five toes. I apologize. Yes, all five toes that leaves a functional foot most often, but um, yes, all five toes are gone, and that was just because of the level of ischemia or loss of blood flow to the tissue. Um, so we thought that that would be probably the most definitive amputation while being able to preserve the most tissue and and again a functional foot. So um, this morning, um, we all went to go see the patient together alongside of the podiatrist who performed the surgery yesterday afternoon. And we were there for the original dressing change. And the original dressing change after surgery is always the most poignant because really we can tell the foot will declare itself in that moment. We'll know, is this going to be a viable incision line? Is this you know foot going to progress to healing, hopefully? Or are we going to go the other way? It's usually pretty telling in those first 24 hours. And as soon as she removed the dressing, it was unfortunate, but the flap itself, again, that is incision line is what I refer to as the flap, um, was pretty ischemic. So on the weekends, we typically don't offer hyperbaric oxygen therapy. It's usually a Monday through Friday, outpatient procedure, low risk, but outpatient patients drive themselves here and then have the treatment, which is about an hour and a half and then drive home. Um, but, just, can you describe the hyperbaric chamber for those that may not be familiar with it? Absolutely. So my only experience with hyperbarics prior to coming to this job was Michael Jackson. So a, a majority of the lay public probably has heard of hyperbaric oxygen therapy because a lot of celebrities and athletes use it for non-FDA regulated, but some studied um, indications like for sleep, um, the fountain of youth, because it's in essence, you're just breathing pressurized 100% medical grade oxygen. So that's the treatment itself. You're in a contained enclosure. Um, it's plexiglass lined almost like a cylindrical tube and you just lay in a bed and you just breathe this pressurized oxygen. And it sounds very simple and in essence it is, but what takes place at the cellular level is this kind of vast cascade of different types of I don't know, old high school stuff like uh, Boyle's Law and Charles Law and Henry's Law, things that occur at the cellular level to actually recreate blood vessels. So angioneogenesis, um, heal infected bones. So people that have, you know, osteomyelitis of their bone um, 
And just, again, this, the tension from the pressure can help pull wound edges together. So hyperbaric oxygen therapy has a very specific set of approved indications that the FDA recognizes. And then it has those kind of off-label things like Michael Jackson was using it for like sleep and, you know, healthy skin and again, other kind of not off-label things. So that's the treatment itself. You lay in a chamber, enclosed, breathe oxygen under pressure. So it it's is, like going scuba diving. It is. Of. We actually refer to patients as divers because the science behind it is identical to scuba diving science. So we actually use the Navy dive tables and we're learning about hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And through that table, we're able to determine how long a patient can remain at depth. We actually bring them down to about 60 feet below sea level and we hold them there at that pressure, breathing 100% oxygen for about 75 minutes. And during that treatment, wow. time, all those complex things can occur. And so I want to stop you there because um, coming up right here on the Heart of Innovation, you're going to find out now that you know what a hyperbaric chamber is and how it works and the mechanism of action, we're going to find out how they're using it for this particular patient that's right here on KDOW. Don't go away. Three years ago, my symptoms. Shit, I love this show. I was going to say, you, you may have found a new co-host. <laughs> I'm like, I'll just, I'll just fade away. <laughs> She's doing great. <laughs> I'm not, you're not, that's not a joke. <laughs> that, literally, yeah, you're, you're so much fun for you. No, you're so good. Um, no, she is so freaking knowledgeable. Um, I, I think, yeah, even Marsha says that's excellent. We have a live studio audience of our of people with PAD here. Um, John, that would be great if if Brittany is not opposed to it when you're not there, coordinate with her. Sure, if she she's up for it. <laughs> I said he's gotta get me some merch. And thanks, thanks, in. Brittany. <laughs> um, one of we need to get her um, a collared one with the with it on there. They're on our website, the shopping one. She can get a collared one with the Save My Piggies. Oh yeah. Well, let's, I mean, look at this. I'm like, I've been kicked off already. <laughs> cancel. I guess I wouldn't say I'm canceled because I haven't done anything stupid. But I just just moved yeah. on. <laughs> so, what do you think? So we have this next segment, and then we need to actually spend a segment on Reflow and their technology. Sure. Um, yeah, because well. I think yeah, because we can. That's fantastic. No, no, you're good. So we have yeah, you're, you're... we have how so many do... the eight minute or so? Yeah, this is like an eight to ten. I think it's now about eight minutes with all of our commercial breaks. Now I think we're we're okay. less. Um, so I think this is eight. Um, and so we'll still spend it because I think that there's still so much to discuss around with Brittany and you and this patient and the learnings and stuff. And then the fourth segment will go into reflow. And the final segment, we'll talk about Pat Awareness Month. Right. So I just to give you long. guys a heads up with the next segment coming up. For, so this is Dr. John's The Pulse one. And on my side, I have it as three minutes and change. So you're actually going to be talking closer to like seven minutes for it. Segment? Yeah, for this third segment coming up here. Also, we have about a minute and 15 before we come back in. Do you like sure. these segments, Colin? Say it one more time. Do you like these segments? Do they work really well in there? I mean, for the most part, I think they work. They just remind me of when you had your medical notepad and then sometimes you'd have your doctor ads on. I thought they were the extension of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so we, um, yeah, let's continue the conversation about hyperbarics because not a lot of people really know about it and also i think it's important to the co time commitment because yeah and and the number of dives and the fact that there I, I, there are some i think medical professionals that don't really believe in it and feel that yeah. it's beneficial yeah you can talk about that mm -hmm. too just tell me when it is the number one and that's why i want to get you know I, I have patients that come to me and ask me about it and then i have to go to the vascular and then the vascular goes to the podiatrist and then they they order it, but why does it have to be that complete dance around? Why do we have to go through? All right, folks, I hate to interrupt. We got 10 seconds till we're live. I'll bring us back. <clears throat> Welcome back to the Heart of Innovation. For more on today's topic, go to theheartofinnovation.org. That's theheartofinnovation.org. 
Once again, here's Emmy Award-winning journalist Kim McNicholas and interventional cardiologist Dr. John Phillips. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I used to be the co-host of this show, but uh, since I invited my nurse practitioner, Brittany, here, I think uh, she's won a lot of hearts over. So I, you know what? I may be shuffled off this uh, wonderful little seat. No, just kidding. Um, we are going to continue our conversation with uh, about hyperbaric treatment because, uh, you know, it's important to talk about this patient, but I think it's also just important to talk about the whole process itself because, not a lot of people know about it. Not a lot of medical professionals may agree that it works. So, Brittany, tell us a little bit about actually what your plan is for this patient and how how many times have we dove somebody on a weekend and a holiday weekend? So what that means, like getting all these people together and then just kind of hyperbarics in general and some of the indications, if you don't mind. Sure. So just to finish up what we have patient low risk procedure that we only offer Monday through Friday here. There are very few urgent or emergent indications for it. However, because her flap showed such early signs of ischemia and she has, in essence, no real revascularization options left for her blood flow, her disease is all small vessel, um, hyperbarics is really the only thing we can offer her. So all the studies that have been done, which in hyperbarics in general and broadly, they're usually low sample size studies. So that's why the data is kind of misconstrued and not well understood by other uh, medical professionals, which I can get into in a moment. But for her indication, ischemic flap failure is one that we don't even need to apply for insurance approval prior to even diving. We can literally say the flap is failing, get her into the tank. And that includes flaps from, let's say you were in a car accident and you had to have a reconstructive flap put on your shoulder because your shoulder muscle got torn off. If that flap fails, hyperbarics is absolutely indicated in that setting to try to preserve that tissue. So same kind of um, hypooxygenation and hyperbarics offers hyperoxygenation. So we put her in the tank today and this is kind of unprecedented for us. I mean, we are a very large hospital system, but um, we do not dive people on the weekend. So there's been only one other occasion that I, and I've been here for a while, um, 10 of the 12 years that the program has been around, and there's been only one other occasion where we dove somebody urgently on the weekend. So we this required massive coordinating between our medical director, the management team up on the unit where we dive people, and then multiple layers of leadership. So it was a really, really nice thing, a collaborative effort, all for the sake of limb salvage for this patient. And her limb, you know, the outcome is still guarded. But if we can and at least- just this morning. So you had to do on a mm -hmm. holiday weekend. You had to be dialing people's cell phone numbers yep. and home numbers yep. to say, hey, we've got an uh, emergent situation here. And I think clinically this is the best bet or else by Monday we might be chopping off her whole leg. That's exactly right. And people jumped to within a matter of minutes after the text went out, we had two, not even just one hyperbaric, we call them tenders or nurses. We didn't, we had two for each day because we like to have a backup. So it's six nurses coming in on the holiday weekend, you know, just to help this lady. And they're all, um, they know her as well because she's a wound care patient. So these nurses are familiar with this patient. It was just a really um, heartwarming and is the right thing to do for her. And so we're hopeful that this in combination with everything else that she's receiving. And, and I, I think this is just a great story to celebrate something positive and um, yeah. illuminating in another, in an often dark world that we kind of practice in. We spend a lot of time um, second guessing ourselves, pointing fingers, uh, complaining about this, that, and the other. But when, again, the quote about easing suffering to do something like this, and Brittany took this on herself. I mean, honestly, I, we used to be involved a little bit in hyperbarics, but I, I don't have my finger on that pulse, uh, at all. And so she took this on and the team also embraced it and said, okay, let's do this. This is the right thing to do. For, not for once, but this is about patient care. And this is kind of why we do what we do. And, and that's why I'm so proud to be a part of it. And i um, glad she can share the story with us. I mean, I'm sure, Brittany, that it's not often that you, and it, it, that you have a situation like this where you're like, hey, I need a huge favor. I need all hands on deck. And you're not one to cry wolf. If, if there's a, a critical need, they're going to jump at it because you would also do the same for them. Exactly. And I think that, you know, oftentimes when, like Dr. Phillips was saying, we are often sharing bad news with patients. We're telling them there's nothing else we can offer you. You have cancer. You're going to lose your leg. If there's that opportunity and it 
comes up, like you said, rarely where we have to jump on it and emergently offer something and we can, and it requires a little bit of stretch and a little bit of bend. But if you have people that buy in and are passionate about patient care, then you can really accomplish anything. And it was so just in these times, it was so uplifting today for all parties involved. No, I, I just, I, I think that's amazing because even this week I had situations where I was actually told that a patient couldn't have a procedure because they didn't, the, this um, emergency room doctor did not feel like calling the vascular surgeon at home and literally wanted to just leave them there overnight. And by morning, you know that, you know, the necrotic tissue is just going to keep getting worse and that's, they're going to need the amputation. I mean, and, and to hear that you guys are going the extra mile and, and doing this, it, I hope it inspires others. It's not like we want to expect everyone. Everyone needs to have a life. You need time with your own families. You need time to just rest and, and revive yourselves. But here's a situation where, you know, you're like, okay, here's a group that can rest and revive, but here's a group that is already rest and revived and so passionate about patients and are willing to go the extra mile now that they have the opportunity. And I think that that's great. And coming up right here on the heart of innovation. I know we keep putting off what we were planning to talk about because we got this amazing blessed surprise with Brittany being here and the story of this, this patient and how their team has just rallied over a holiday weekend to help save this patient's leg. So I want to continue with this, if you don't mind, a few more minutes. And we're going to continue the story, see where the patient's at now. And I know we have a question that is coming in from our studio audience that we wanna to get to about hyperbaric chambers. So stay with us right here on KBOW, don't go away. The Pulse, brought to you by Reflow Medical, the pulse of medical ingenuity. Here's Dr. Phillips. The organization, the Global Pad Association, featuring <laughs> physicians sharing their learnings from complex treatments for break. coronary this and peripheral one artery one disease. This one this one one. Dr. John Phillips yeah. with uh, this week's case. Um, you know, I think the part of he what we do really is, is learning <laughs> from, uh, I wouldn't say our mistakes, but just anyway, kind of mis so, misadventures sometimes. And oh a few goodness. weeks ago, I uh, was taking care of a gentleman who well, had uh, limb-threatening ischemia. Well, we can talk about. He was uh, on deck for a major amputation. Uh, He'd been turned down to several other places, <laughs> and he had blocked artery behind the knee. What do we want to talk um, about? And this, oftentimes, this we have to put a tube in, uh, kind of facing I, down I uh, towards um, directly this, in so, the, let's the affected some, limb. Uh, and, uh, you know, with that tube, we can adv advance wires and little tiny Mom, catheters to uh, try to yeah. open up that vessel. Um, oftentimes, oftentimes that doesn't work. And then we have to put a tube in, in the foot and kind of weird. connect the dots um, from above and below. We should we probably just do. talk about how difficult um, in doing sometimes so, there was so much calcium, the commitment that the, the arteries have can... to do hyperbarics and the commitment from their family too. Sure. That's part of the issue. <clears throat> you mind, Marcia, um, um, jumps in. I think Douglas wants to just say a quick, um little thing he put a little note in there he wanted to say just a quick if you can uh, you know call on douglas just really quick he just had a quick um thing he wanted to say right douglas i see what you wrote do you want to just say that live okay, okay. and then marcia Please. wherever marcia went um marcia we can call on you just go ahead and unmute when he calls on you okay. to ask your question that's a good question okay and um if nancy has one we can call on her too but I, I don't know. She's not raising her hand. You know, remember we had, tank? so another thing that's going on now is Burning Man, which remember we had that guest on from Burning Man? <laughs> or he yeah. went to Burning oh, Man. My Everyone drives from Silicon Valley over there. It's amazing what they have to get into. I wish we had someone that could go live with us from Burning Man. Though. It's, Maybe next it's year. Like, it, it seems pretty crazy to me, I guess, from what I've read. Oh, it, it's it's completely wild. I, you should see how my friends. I've been a part of preparation. I just won't go. I, I'm literally because of my asthma. I can't be around that dust at all. Like that would be just deadly for me. So I don't even want a chance. Um, because having the mask on, right? So they're like, oh, just wear a mask. And I'm like, I, I can't wear a mask for that many hours. And then conversely, I can't be out in the dust. <laughs> so, yeah, I help people prepare. 
it's yeah i mean it's kind of crazy though because i you read a lot of stuff about it and th i just read that actually that they now have a makeshift um airport for the, like the billionaires that fly their flights or that fly in and they have well, they do. yeah yeah they've had that forever mm. they, they it's just gotten a little bit more formalized but they have private planes um the guy that saved my mom's life um and and flew my mom emergency um does that he actually or has done that where he would fly in small groups into burning man oh wow which is crazy and last year it flooded isn't it in a desert <laughs> yeah wasn't it? i thought it flooded though i thought that like it got this torrential rain or something Jeez, that must be disgusting he's like I've seen pictures of people wearing very little clothing and full of paint, and that seems like a mess, frankly. Did you? I don't think you could see it here. Um, but we, I, I created all new um, oh, yeah. graphics and everything for it. But I need a um, and maybe this is something Brittany can help me with. John, I got to get a different picture. Yeah, Correct. I mean, you don't want the one from when I just started here twelve years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not the same like technology anymore you know the the it, it, it's not as much your your years i think you still look the same but it's just that it's the the it's it's grainy compared to the new hd cameras and so i just yeah, need I never... you in a few different I need a few different, like I need you in front of a green screen. Like I need Hey there folks, sorry to interrupt. Just want to give a little bit of information. Roughly going to be about 15 seconds till we air. The flow segment we have in this segment is about two minutes, 30 seconds. So we only actually have about eight and a half to nine minutes of talking for right now. We're going to be coming live in about five seconds now. Welcome back to The Heart of Innovation. For more on today's topic, go to theheartofinnovation.org. That's theheartofinnovation.org. Once again, here's Emmy Award-winning journalist, Kim McNicholas, and interventional cardiologist, Dr. John Phillips. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Brittany's been such a hit. We've got uh, several questions from the uh, studio audience. And uh, Douglas, what's on your mind, my friend? Well, we, we talk about hope, courage, and strength in this program a lot. And as a patient, listening to what y'all said and what y'all go through when you took your oath, it's absolutely amazing. And it feels it, the hope and courage to hear in your voice, Brittany, and you too, Dr. John, about what y'all go through and what y'all give to us. We I, There's no words we can say thank you enough for what y'all do and how y'all give and all of us out here wish we had doctors like you on our team. We appreciate it. Very much. And Doug and Douglas, home for you is Texas, right? Yes. So we've got folks from all over the country and sometimes people calling from South Africa and whatnot. So thank you, Douglas. I appreciate that. Okay. So also we have Marsha. Marsha actually has a question. Thank you so much, Douglas. Uh, Marsha, go ahead and unmute and ask your question of uh, Dr. John Phillips and Brittany. Thank you, Kim. And thank you, Dr. John and Brittany. Um, I found what you were talking about very interesting about the hyperbaric chamber. And, you know, I'd always heard of it, but I guess I never knew what it was. So your explanation was very good. My um, question is, why aren't they used on a regular basis? And why does did it take kind of an act of God to use it on the weekend if it's really, truly that helpful? Yeah, please. So there are a lot of regulatory um, hoops that we have to jump through every time someone undergoes hyperbaric oxygen therapy. There, uh, If you get to Googling hyperbaric oxygen therapy, usually the first six things that will come up are the catastrophic explosive fires that have occurred as a result of unregulated people manning these facilities. Because remember, it's pressurized oxygen in a contained cylinder um, delivered yeah, under pressure. If you bring anything unregulated into 
the oxygen pressure chamber that could potentially create a spark. So I'm talking flint and unregulated cotton and some of these things people brought they brought a horse into one that had their horseshoe still on it bucked and it when it bucked you know you introduce a spark to oxygen and it just combusts and that chamber essentially becomes a torpedo and it would just take this entire building down so um as great and as passionate as we are about offering hyperbaric oxygen therapy and as safe as it is we go through extensive safety regulations um, as a team. And then every time a patient dives, um, again, I keep using that verbiage, that's what we call them, divers. Every time a patient dives, we go through a list of, you cannot have hairspray on, you cannot have deodorant on, you are there with your body that God gave you and the gowns that we provide on the 100% cotton linens that we provide. Um, in addition to all the safety regulations that we check and make sure are very, very thorough, we also are very, very bound um, by patients' insurance companies, um, by what the insurance companies will pay for. With no insurance, hyperbaric costs about $3,000 a treatment. And most patients require a minimum of 30 treatments to achieve a benefit from, right? And this is something that we were going to get into, but this is perfect. Your question is perfect because I can talk about it. So hyperbarics, the way it works is in an accumulative effect. So I can't just dive you one time today and one time in two weeks. I have to dive you sequentially at minimum five days a week, uninterrupted for 30 dives. That's the ideal scenario because as that oxygen content saturates the tissue that is of concern, through those mechanisms that I described earlier, then and only then can that complex process of formulating new blood vessels and new bone can occur. So we have a lot of, you know, patients that have to buy in. They have to accept that this is a, you know, part-time job in essence. Um, their families have to transport them if they can't, you know, work a gas pedal if that's where their wound is on their foot. Um, so the whole team, family included, has to be part of this. So there are, again, these few and far circumstances where urgent hyperbarics is required. This today's scenario being one of them. The other one that you may be familiar with is carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, people that have a gas leak in their home and in unintentionally breathe in carbon monoxide, an urgent indication to cure that is hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And that is something that can immediately reverse the effects of carbon monoxide poisoning in a matter of 20 minutes, breathing that pressurized oxygen, as opposed to the hours and likely, you know, too late at that point, that it would take your body to clear that with only just breathing ambient oxygen. So there's a lot of science and a lot of um, that's behind it. What a fantastic explanation, huh? Yeah, lots, lots of information. I love right. the way this this whole show has turned, and um, we have a new star of the show. Um, she is amazing, and we're gonna have to have her back. <laughs> Get over um, here. Over, and over again. She just got herself into trouble. So uh, stay right here on the heart of innovation. We're gonna continue. Don't worry, Brittany's not going away. So you don't go away either. We'll have more with nurse practitioner Brittany and of course, Dr. John <laughs> next right here on the heart of innovation. Don't go away. Here's one of my favorite shows. So you know what I think we do, John, is, yes. um, and I'm sure Reflow is going to understand, is yes. let's continue because I think we want to wrap up this conversation with, with where we're at and the patients because I don't want to leave people hanging on it. Um, and then in, in, the, in the end, I can say, um, and even Marcia says a star is born. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in the end, what we do is we say, um, and gosh, this show took a different turn. This is great. I love it. And then, um, you know, we talked about doing the tour. Our brand new sponsor again is Reflow Medical. We're really excited to have them, of course. And we're going to talk about, we have Issa, the CEO, coming on on Saturday, September 28th. Mm -hmm. So people can tune in, hear about the tour, hear about the technology at that point. What do you think? That's good. Take us back. Wrap it up. I won't talk anymore. I... <laughs> He's fired. Just yep. Just, yeah, just, we want you to hang around. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we love the, you. The, the, I love the patronizing uh, tone and the voice. <laughs> no. No, it's um, great we're... though. Like this is this is an organic show, um, totally off the cuff. But I think people learn a lot. I mean, I'm learning too. We hyperbarics for us is it, it's a lot of work for these for our nurse practitioners as well because you're going to take it back then. Because that's okay. exactly what would be great to say. And then 
can you update us just on the patient where you're going? And then, because we literally have um, probably two minutes to wrap that up. And then um, John and I, for two minutes, just again, addressing that we have the new sponsor. We're really excited. This is the reason we're so excited about these shows is these moments like this one. Um, and it's really all about the patient. Then when we have opportunities to share patient stories and to, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and don't forget, it is not about, the, uh, also what I find interesting about this program today was what the doctors actually have to go through sometimes to, to, to give us what we get from y'all and, and, we, we don't think about that a lot. We I want what I want when I want it. But I also have to realize you have kids, you have a life, and there's a lot of things you yeah, go I mean, through. It's, it's uh, you know, 3 o'clock Eastern time, typically on the weekends, and we're lucky to have our nurse practitioners helping us in general, but they're often, we kind of have a stop of seeing new consults at noon, so they're often gone before noon. So, again, sticking around, finishing the job doing what's right um is important i mean and and we don't we don't highlight that enough frankly <clears throat> hey i hate to interrupt roughly we're going to about have 20 seconds till we come back in last section so for this one as soon as you hear the music we only got about roughly 30 seconds to get out before the outro goes but we have our full time with it so right now it should be about 10 seconds and then we're going to come back in Welcome back to The Heart of Innovation. For more on today's topic, go to theheartofinnovation.org. That's theheartofinnovation.org. Once again, here's Emmy Award-winning journalist, Kim McNicholas, and interventional cardiologist, Dr. John Phillips. Wrapping up the show here, we only have a few minutes left. I love the fact that we kind of took um, an, a really an organic turn uh, with respect to a topic that is pertinent to what we uh you know, do to help people um, preserve their limbs and plus a, an acute patient issue. So Brittany, again, thank you for being on the show above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, thank you for taking my job now, but um, give us a two sec, two minute wrap up of what we expect for our patient. Yes, she's actively diving as we speak. She's up there in the chamber right now doing excellent and she will continue to dive daily today, tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday as we move through this weekend and into next week. And ideally she, her limb is saved and her tissue starts to pink up and she doesn't require any further amputation. How quickly would you potentially see change? Uh, we'll know if hyperbarics in this scenario is benefiting her within the first probably 72 hours. So that's why these three days are really important. And so if we would have put this off till Tuesday, game over? Game over, yeah, you have to get it earlier. Not, not, it will not reverse black necrotic tissue, it will reverse pink um, or purplish ischemic appearing tissue. Fantastic. And Kim, this is why we do the show. This is why we're thankful for Reflow Medical for um, defibrillating us and keeping us alive again uh, for at least a, another year or so. And looking forward well, you know to- what, This is such a, a great example of why I am, I'm really so thankful to Reflow Medical for giving us another year because this provides an opportunity. I can't tell you, how many hospitals would never do or don't have the ability to do what you are doing? I, you guys can't be the exception to the rule in terms of being short staffed, especially after COVID. And, you know, you're every person there is literally overworked. Um, and, and so the fact that you're still willing to go the extra mile for every single individual patient, a patient is a person, they're a human being. And the fact that you're taking an individual approach to care and each one of your colleagues is literally taking each patient as if they were their own member of their own family and really customizing the care to their personal needs and, and again, going the extra mile. So kudos to you guys. And that, that doesn't even say enough because you're not doing it for the glory, you're not doing it for the money, you're doing it straight from the bottom of your heart. And that means the world to us. And if we can inspire other physicians and clinicians to, to do the same, um, 
I, I just think that that would be amazing because we would save so many more limbs until we can get a handle on PAD. I think that this is really what it's going to take to save life and limb. Yeah, two, two, two things real quick. We have to thank Ohio Health and the heart and vascular team at Riverside Methodist Hospital here in Columbus for pulling this together. So it's more than just it's not me at all. It's more than, but it's Brittany, but it's more than just Brittany. So it, it takes a village to help these folks. And, and don't forget, there's 220, 230 million people that have PAD and worldwide and about seven or 8 million have critical limb ischemia worldwide. So that's a lot of people that we need to help. And thank you for um, putting the Global PAD Association together, Kim. And again, thanks to, to Reflow Medical. Yeah, a, a huge thank you. And I know I teased at the beginning of the show, we were going to talk about my tour. They hosted me this week. And, and what I appreciated about them hosting me this week down at their facility is, is that they respected me. They took me on the physician tour where they were truly giving me the nuts and bolts of the technology, the mechanism of action. And what I appreciated the most was the heart of every single individual on their team. And I really do want to take some time. I don't want to rush in to share it with you. So we do have the CEO of Reflow Medical that is scheduled to come on the show on September 28th. So you don't want to miss that. And we will continue this story then because you have to hear about their game team changing technology that I got to experience at their facility. Thank you so much to Reflow Medical. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And we'll, this is the start of season three. So continue to join us every weekend. Thanks, Brittany. I think we are clear. Okay, good. No, that was amazing. Can you connect us via text um, so we can get her into some more trouble? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I will certainly. I'll send it. I'll send it right now. <laughs> is that um, so just, you so you'll actually... delete my contact and then just slide her in? <laughs> is that how this is going to go? Now, hold, hold on, Dr. John. When you drive, <laughs> drive home today, don't think we've all just pushed you right out the door. <laughs> exactly. We but I'll make sure I wear my seatbelt. I'll make sure I wear my seatbelt. We haven't done that just because you're not the quarterback coach. You're the wide receiver coach That's now. right. That's right. All right. All right. I got I you, Douglas. see you today. Wow. Um, no, you're not slipping away that easily. Um, we love you. Um, but I think the addition, I'm wondering if um, uh, an actual turn, if Brittany's up for it, an actual turn might be, and maybe John, you can do the quick filming for her. It would be having letting her as a nurse practitioner do a case in learnings. This would be the perfect one if we could get it into a nutshell to say, you know, hi, I'm Brittany, nurse practitioner at Ohio Health um, with this week's The Pulse. This is a case where we have a patient that comes in, it's ahead of a holiday weekend, and this is what happened. This is how I, you know, the biggest lesson is that by Tuesday after the holiday weekend, this patient's going to lose their limb if we waited. And we got our team together. This was a lesson that, that is for all to learn, that we were able to, to go against the grain, order this hyperbaric, called in the volunteer, or not the volunteers, the, the the team for the hyperbaric chamber to do this. And, you know, so I, I think that this is what it means to go the extra mile for the patient and do what's what's necessary, right? You know, and then just leave it at that. So that could be a really good little 60 second chunk that we could do for next week, if, if Brittany, you're willing. Of course. Uh, yep. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to record it if you wanted to, if you felt comfortable doing it right now, or if you want to kind of wait and put it together um i think it could we give it it'd be nice if we could give an update so we'll know oh, by yeah, said she wants outcome, we're so. here this whole weekend too so we're here tomorrow and monday too so the, uh, like we'll get yeah we'll get it we'll get it for you that's awesome because i hope god i hope this works i really right. do so yeah but this just means you guys are kind of you're here the whole week i actually have there was one doctor that said she won't she won't see any patients on a Friday before a holiday weekend because she doesn't want to have to come in over the weekend. Well, but so there, there is, 
we call it the, the dump, the, the, the dump before the holiday. And basically for whatever reason, I mean, I, you know, you can read the tea leaves, but a lot of hospitals open the floodgates and try to get their patients away for holiday weekend. And coverage is an issue, but I mean, let's be honest, people don't necessarily want to work on the weekends. And again, like I said, wow. these guys typically leave by noon. It's 315 or whatever it is. And I don't know. Do you have to stay here the whole time? Yeah. Why can't yeah. we? Even... Well, we can die for tomorrow morning. Yeah. But right. I'll, we'll just do whatever the other staff can. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, again, this... but can I, can I share one thing? Like when you took that oath, Dr. John, I mean, I, I'm a recovering addict. So I'm a reco I'm a licensed chemical dependency counselor here in the state of Texas. So I took a call at three o'clock this morning and me and another individual took a suicide call for a recovering addict. And and it's that thought that I know as a recovering addict, the only way for me to get what I have is to give back. And what you go through as a doctor and how do you develop that heart that no matter what it takes, I know I need to be with my family, but this patient needs me right now more than anything else. And to develop that, that, that thought and that feeling that that's what it takes sometimes, isn't it? Well, I mean, I, I always tell this to um, the interns, medical students, that the, it, it, being a physician, nurse pre being a, a provider, physician, nurse practitioner, PA, there is a lot of responsibility with that. And you have to take it seriously, but make make no mistake. I mean, like this is a job. There are days when you don't want to get out of bed. Um, there are days where you want to do other things, but people are counting on you. And like I've said to numerous times about this show, listening to people's stories, listening to the Save My Piggies, listening to you guys talk, you develop more empathy as to what that patient's going through. And I think that at least personally for me has made me a better physician. I am not the, I mean, I, I, I'm not always like on my A game and, and maybe not the most cheerful guy out there uh, or the most positive sometimes because it can, this can, this just can drag you down. I mean, like there's a lot of critical care doctors that I know through COVID who just, they could not handle the amount of death that they saw through COVID and have quit. Um, so it takes a toll on everybody. But at the end of the day, remember why you're here. Relieve suffering if you can. Do the best you can. We all make mistakes, but no one's going to fault you for doing the right thing, what you think is the right thing. And this is the right thing. What Brittany's doing is the right thing. And I don't, I honestly don't know if anybody else, I mean, I, I can't speculate, but it it just goes without saying it's the right thing to do. And you but, know how many pay, how many people in our group I want to I can't I don't know how to understand or get them to understand what Kim goes through twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, three hundred and sixty five days a year. Her life literally revolves around each and every one of us as patients. She answers the phone. She still has her life, but she she talked to a doctor in a, in Timbuktu. At four o'clock in the morning, she literally, I mean, what she goes through is just, just amazing and trying to get people to understand that, you know. No, it's is. so funny. <clears throat> Douglas gets it because he's, he's there with me a lot. And actually, you know, Marsha ends up on the phone with me a lot in the middle of, you know, all my crises. And it's so funny. Um, and I don't know how you guys experience you know, a lot of what you do, you know, with your patients, if you see it, but you know, I get a lot of people who really take me for granted and because I'm on social media and he's, you're eating a amputation suck sucker. I can tell you, I can tell, <laughs> um, that's my amputation suck sucker. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I just, is social media is just a mean, mean place sometimes. Mm -hmm. that you should see the messages that I get sometimes with people that, you know, if I'm too direct or whatever, they realize like I have 12,000 patients that I'm dealing with. I can't always sugarcoat things or, you know, people will post things in the group that are. But, you know, the other thing too, is this patient, she probably, I'm speculating her, her daughter is a nurse practitioner 
her daughter is a huge advocate for her. I I venture to guess she would have lost her leg before this, my hunch, uh, if her daughter didn't advocate. And that's why we always tell patients, I do it, and I imagine, we'll see, Brittany sees a lot of patients for us and knows that we get second opinions, third opinions, whatever. But I'm all, like, we've always advocated for patients to have a family member with them, get a second opinion. Don't take, don't take uh, you know, major amputation as an answer unless it can be 100% avoided, if possible. And realize yeah. this Wednesday, yeah. Kim's going to be on the radio on the show, and it's her birthday. She's not going to be on her on the beach with a frozen margarita or nothing. She's going to be giving to us on her birthday, which is yeah. September the fourth. Happy birthday! Go away. Thank Dr. you, Dr. John and Brittany. Would the would this patient almost certainly have lost their limb, leg, foot? I don't know. Um, without the kind of dedication that you provided? Well, so I'll make my comment and then I'll let Brittany comment. This patient had kind of these smoldering wounds for a while that just weren't really healing. If you if you look at pictures of her foot back in June, it actually didn't look that bad, but I think the, the bone was infected and, and her daughter just felt like things weren't getting better. Um, and so I did a procedure to, to get some better blood flow. The thing we often worry about is what we call embolization. So debris within the vessel breaking off and clogging up, you know, the little tiny micro vessels that you can't see. I don't believe that that happened. Um, but, you know, she did have some complications that, that she's got a bad heart, bad kidneys. I mean, there's a reason, unfortunately, why if you look at all comers, in her situation, particularly those with bad kidneys and close to dialysis, almost a, probably 40% of them are dead in three years. Uh, it, it's just, it's, it's bad. And and we always talk about, or I always talk about being proactive and, you know, the horse is out of the barn here and, and we do what we can. I hope to God we can save her leg because if she loses her leg, there's a 50% of of people who get a major amputation are dead within a year, 10 to 15% die in the hospital. They don't leave the hospital. So a major amputation for her is tantamount to a death sentence. So we're doing, Brittany's doing everything she can. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't think she needs any more blood flow because I think there was decent blood flow. It's just infection. The, like, well, there's infection, I think, but it's just the micro tissue doesn't work. Well, you guys have me close to tears, so I just want to say on her behalf, thank you. Because if I, if that were me, I would wish there was a team like you guys working behind the scenes. I think, is this Douglas? Is that mm -hmm. who that is? I think something uh, that I thought of when you were talking, Douglas, and just kind of goes with all of this, when you were asking, like, with your role as an addiction specialist and being a recovering addict yourself, I think you'd agree similar to our role, you have to have a calling, like you have to have a calling to want to do this kind of work. And how do you prioritize family over work or the patients that need you beyond just, I didn't take the Hippocratic oath, but I feel the exact same, do no harm, help people, don't hurt them. Um, and I have a young daughter, young, young daughters at home that are, you know, quote, need me, but my calling is here. My passion is here. And just like that woman laying in that bed, if that was my mother or anybody, I would mm -hmm. want someone like you said, um, to offer the same thing to them. And it's not often that we have to be faced with these dire emergent situations, but when we do, and we are able to help someone in a big demonstrative way, it feels, it feels good for us. Um, yeah. but more importantly for them. And I and I, that we, we need that follow-up for sure. Cause I mean, I think everyone's going to hear this show is absolutely engaged in the story now, 100%. Oh, and we really, we really do need that follow-up. Yeah, because yeah. you know, I feel that part of me wonders if, if I should have done anything to get her blood flow. But the issue is she had no, we call it named vessels. She had no named vessels going into her foot. God gives you three arteries that supply the foot uh, below the knee. And she had none of them straight line going in. And I felt like she needed that. And I would do it again and again and again and again. And, you know, I hope that this works. I mean, I, I think she was destined for amputation of some sort, but... I just, it's, uh, again, what we do, we make errors of omission or commission. So we either make an error by not doing something or we make an error by doing something. Early on in my career, I felt like I would make errors by not doing something. And now I make more errors by doing something like what I shared with that one case. But 
at the end of the day, if it's my dad, mom, friend, whatever, what would I do? And I would have done that procedure on her over and over again if I had to. Dr. John, when you said that um, she had no named arteries and that we have three arteries, is that what, when we're looking at our Dopplers and it says multiphasic, so are they talking about the three arteries? Yeah, so you're basically kind of looking at like um, volume kind of through a tube and then that volume kind of gives off a certain pressure um, kind of calculation based on the ultrasound. So the phasicity means that the the, the artery is kind of healthy and it's and it's and it kind of um, is it contracts um, and and relaxes. So you want the phasicity like some we'll say like monophasic meaning it's very slow and just doesn't have that up oh. or that squeeze that it needs. And then the alternate of that or the the best is what's called triphasic. So it's just up and down and, and through. Um, so that's what we're looking at. But when you, Thank you, the tibial vessels are the ones that, that kind of branch off um, below the knee. And those are the ones that go into the foot that we try to open up most of the time. Thanks. Cause I, I thought that meant three vessels, not that you could have multi-phases in one vessel. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sometimes thank you. Sometimes talk about multi-segments, multi-segmental disease. We kind of break things up above the growing, below the growing, above the knee, but no, below the knee. And and if there's most people, probably forty percent of people with critical limb ischemia have multi-level or or multi-segmental um, disease um, in their arteries too. I think I'm about ready to take my medical board test. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kidding. (laughs) You said that. I was like, what is she going to (laughs) ask? And here's a good question, Dr. John, that I heard from the other day in one of the groups is, I wonder if the doctors ever think about us when they're not. How hard is it to walk out of that hospital today and leave what you've been through behind and not have that carry over so this afternoon you're barbecuing hamburgers and you're thinking about this lady and you burn a hamburger because you're well, mine, you know, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I'll say this, there are certain physicians who are excellent physicians dedicated to their patients, but they do basic, you know, they do shift work. ER, for example, you're on, you're off. You're never going to hear about those patients again. Anesthesiology, for the most part, some of the inpatient services, hospitalists, they are on and they're off. Um, you know, we're always kind of on call to some degree, but we have a pretty good um, kind of buffer. Uh, but yeah, you're thinking about the patients. The ones, what you think about more are the ones where you have made a mistake or the the outcome wasn't what you wanted. Uh, and then and that can affect you. It's I, I kind of liken it to kicking field goals. So you make out, you make all your extra points, meaning you're successful in your procedures, kind of the low easiest procedures. And then you start trying to hit some 40 yarders. You make those. Okay. Now I'm going to hit a 50 yarder. Ooh, hit the 50, 60, 65. You're now you're on a, now you're making a lot of 65s and you feel pretty good about yourself, meaning successful procedures. And then all of a sudden you miss one and okay, maybe I pushed that one too far. I made an error of commission and then you miss another one and there's a complication. Now you kind of can fall back and then you can start missing extra points, if you know what I mean. And that's where it can get in your headspace and you you can get a little bit, I mean, they call it the yips in uh, uh, football, but you can get the yips in what we do. So you have to be, I, I speak of like a, having a humble confidence. You have to be confident in yourself, but you have to know your limits and again, do no harm. But you always carry that stuff with you. Some docs are better at it than others with divorcing themselves completely. And I think Marcia said it one time. She said she was married to her doctor. He Does told that... me that. Yeah. He basically yeah. told me that we were in a long-term relationship. And I, of course, I didn't know we were in a long-term relationship. Well, again, I'm I mean, glad I like that, him. <laughs> yeah, that speaks to the fact that you have, as a patient, have to buy in too. You have to yeah. buy in for barracks. You have to buy in to stop, you know, quit smoking or just God helps those who help themselves. You're not going to help yourself. I'll still help you. But at some point, there's not, you know, there's stuff I can't do, honestly. Do you find that you're more engaged with patients that do take a lead in their own health care and follow your advice? 
I don't know that I'd be more um, engaged per se. I it feels rewarding, like uh, personally, if I can speak selfishly for a moment, like if I talk to a patient one year and I say, you, you've got to lose weight, you just had a heart attack, um, the best thing you can do, the risk factors you can modify are X, Y, Z. And then in one year, they come back to see us again and follow up and they say, I lost 50 pounds, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. To hear that, you're like, oh, I'm getting through. You took that initiative, you listened, and that is rewarding. I think actually maybe the opposite is a little more true. The patients that require more coaching, that require more hard conversations that aren't necessarily following through or that require closer follow-up because they are slipping or they're, they're having more complications for whatever reason, those people tend to take more of my focus and engagement because then I'm, you know, really trying to like guide them along the right path. So I think it's kind of both ways, I'd say. What's that I couldn't saying, walk to my, squeaky I couldn't. wheel? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I couldn't walk to my mailbox, but six months later, now I'm walking to the end of the road because of what, and it's like, we, we hear that all the time in this program is, you know, they come join us and they say, well, I'm, I can't even walk to the driveway. Now they're doing two miles a day or like, you know what? It's fabulous seeing Marsha's pictures in the morning when she's doing her hikes. And that's the inspiration. That's the giving back that we have to give to each other. And that's why it, this show with Dr. Phillips and, and Kim doing their thing is just amazing because it helps the whole team effort. For me, that's the whole team effort that we have, have to work together. One doesn't work completely without the other one. It's a, it is a team. You can't take the tires off the car and drive the car. I'm sorry, John. See, you're stuck. Yeah, I know. I, I was. I, I tell you, the the show again. Like I've said, it 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 allows me to wear the put the glasses on and see through the eyes of a patient of our patients, um, which has been humbling for sure. Because a lot of it, like I've talked about this too. A lot of times, you know, you see it as I got to do this to get to the next one and the next one. But like you never, you're it's a hamster wheel. You never get off the wheel. But that's not a bad thing. Or it's a marathon that you never finish. Like there's no end game here unless you quit. So we don't quit. We keep going. There are good days and bad days. I'm not going to lie to you, but you got to keep going. Lisa, we've been on the phone with Kim and she says the same thing. It's, it's amazing what she does for us as clients and what she's given and what she goes through every day. So Kim, you know, yeah, three years. Imagine three years ago and where you are today. Think yeah. of what you've been through in every the ups, the downs, the backwards, the forwards, three steps forward, two steps back, six and steps are- forward, all of the all everything that you go through to what you have given us today and what you've created. And we have five years. Um, the weight of my heart is five years old on Wednesday. So it just happened to be on my same on my birthday, but that we got incorporated. At least you'll I don't never know how forget. that happened. <laughs> but we're five forget. years old. And I didn't even plan like a birthday celebration for the way to my heart, which is really sad because you can't do the next big one until it's like, ooh, yay, you're six years old. Um, so I didn't plan one for being five years old this year because we're so dedicated and so literally, you know, focused on the patients that I didn't even know what year it was. Like, no joke. I have no... I, I had no idea it's been five years already until um, actually, I think it was Marsha Burr, one of our other patients, actually, the one that does our moving hot days, said, do you realize like you've been, you're five years old, we should do something. And I said, I don't have time. I am so focused on literally saving life and limb. Well, yeah. And what's, it, what's it like being 35? What? 25. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to say 25, right, Brittany? You're supposed to say 25. Because uh, yeah. my birthday was yesterday, and someone said, what birthday was like yesterday? Oh, no, happy birthday. <laughs> That's what I said. Right. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Oh, I didn't catch that up. Jeez. <laughs> See, I don't celebrate birthdays anymore. Like, you know, <laughs> it's another trip around the sun. You made it. Move on. <laughs> I still like to celebrate. Because my daughter was like, I have to go to school on my birthday. I said, yes. Ooh. If they put candles on my birthday cake, I'll have to call the fire department because of how old I am now. Yeah, that's a good thing, though, right? Well, we appreciate you guys. We really do. Thanks for being a part of this. This was so special. Thank you. 
Yeah, I have one other special treat. So just today, um, I don't know, John, you were there for Amputation Nation. Mm -hmm. um, it's a brand new documentary, Brittany, that they're going to be um, doing. They interviewed. Um, I'm so glad that John took the um, the time out to come out to our our patient event in Chicago. And also a big part of that was so that I could get him filmed for this new documentary. And I got the first clip that we're going to start putting out there and we're adding it to our show um, as a um, as a commercial during our shows. Um, and so I wanted to show you the first clip because I didn't expect it to even come out this good. So I'm these so are the same these are the same people that put together um, the radiation. What, it? what what's it called? What is it? Scattered. Scattered. So it was a PBS special, right? Or something? Or I don't think one it went on PBS. Um, oh, but this they're trying to pitch this one to PBS, aren't they? That's yeah, what Yeah, and they're doing it in separate sections. And I didn't know they're going to be doing a full episode on what we do. And so, um, but I wanted to show you the first one. And since Brittany is there before you go, I just thought you'd think it was so powerful because it just sums up, you know, what you were saying, you know, that, you know, it's, it's so important. These patients really want to keep their legs. So let me just share it. It's only a minute long. Um, I just need to pull it up really quick. So if you Google static, or no, scatter, scatter, scatter. scatter sorry. You'll never want to walk in a cath lab again. <clears throat> because, yeah, well, about like radiation exposure. And the, only long, so. And like, um, here we go. Orthopedic injury. How many, how many procedures are you willing to go through? Is it worth going through that many, or would you would rather just? Step <laughs> back? I was planning. <laughs> was it worth it? Oh yeah, I have my leg, man. Amputation should absolutely, positively, one hundred percent, never be a first line treatment. What an incredible operation! What an incredible lab you have here. Without a doubt underdiagnosing peripheral arterial disease, it has not gotten the attention that it should because it is a killing disease, it is a disabling disease, and most importantly, it's a disease that we now have great treatments for. Okay, let's go to the next one. They were gonna amputate it, didn't I? I needed to consult with my family, did I want it off here or here? You're just shocked, you just, I mean, it's scared. I mean, I don't even know how to explain it, you're 40, two years old. We're waiting till people are at the end of the spectrum and almost beyond hope. There is good care available here. Closed minds are what we have to get rid of. Would that just... Mm -hmm. That's cool. Amazing. Yeah. So that's, that's the first of, they're doing a, a slow, I know, right? Nancy, it is, wow. Um, a slow rollout. Um, Douglas was actually interviewed for it as well um, as so many others that we that came to our event. Can I say this? I was the second person Dr. Walker ever used that on when he first got it. Oh, that that the, uh, the yeah the uh, thing. Oh yeah, that's a it kind of shows perfusion. Yeah, I think what that was. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. That's awesome. I am really excited about our year to come, and uh, we have a new fill-in guest co-host, so when you're not, actually, you know what, we can line her up already. You said <laughs> you can't be, ha, 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 ha. I just, I, I'm just, I'm just the middleman now, so uh, maybe um, I'll be the agent, that's it. <laughs> I think it would be on the um, 14th, I am going to be. We're announcing limb preservation excellence with for Canada. Oh, um, so we're having Dr. Giuseppe. That's why I'm surprised you're not going to be there. Me, you and I, I will. I will call in. I'm going to be on the Phillips Boys golfing. Now I don't know uh, if we're golfing or not, but I will call in. It's just weird when you can't get good sound, and then we have this new sponsor. So. We want to make the sure can. if the sound's not good, I will. It's like, um, if the glove doesn't fit, you must quit. <clears throat> so that's OJ Simpson. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> just because now we since we stream also live on vi on video it's also then we only put your phone number up there or your name on the screen and there's no visual yeah if i can again if i can get on the computer with assuming i have wi-fi and some availability i'll be there i'll keep you posted no worries i just i don't want to because it's a really stressful month i know it is me. I'm going live every single day. Some days I'm going live, like on every Wednesday, we're going live three times in a day. This is on YouTube, right? We're doing, yeah, I'm live on YouTube with, because we have, it's, it's important because we want these clean since they're the global PAB impact awards that we're doing every single day. So we want to make sure it's clean and, and such. So I would rather know in the I will let you know, I will let you know as soon as I, land wherever i'm landing which is thursday mean? meaning i'll let you know if i have a signal where i'm at by That's thursday true. thursday well because i need to have i need to plan for it april so it's september thursday wait a second that's the 12th i already got someone on the 20th 21st for it to to fill in oh yeah and the reason i did that is just because the guy gave us he gave us fifteen thousand dollars. That's good so, for him. Let him let him speak. Give um, him the, give him the talking stick. <laughs> just for you know the one day he doesn't want to do it often. He but he I, you know I thought it was nice just to. That's very, to hey, you know what? Yes, exactly, just exactly. Help him to sponsor the show. You yeah, I mean, you put your money in, and uh, yes, you should yes you should be able to. It's very similar to the NIL where. Uh, people donate all this money and they want to hang out with the Buckeye football players. So I get it. Yep. I have one suggestion. If Brit it, only if Brittany's game. <laughs> now, she's yes. she's a busy young lady. <laughs> so, but I, I can't I can't speak for her. So I will. I, I will. will. How about I include her in all the show prep for it, <laughs> and so that we're all ready to go. And if you can't make it and your signal is not going to be great from two to three, then um, I she's prepared to jump in and pinch hit for you. If she's available, right? But it's Saturday, two to three. Long as I'm out it's by our, three. So, four. She's got a wedding so, at four. So as long as she's 14. out by three. Yep. So that's the 14th. So then we have a backup. See, that works really well and it allows you to be flexible. Yep, there's yep. This is you, she this did a great job today. You really have a, 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 a attitude about sharing and making it at, at our level as we're not doctors. Oh, well, you guys have a good understanding of it too. Multiphasic. Who would that share handle those words? It's Marsha. Marsha, own it. Yep. Yeah. Thanks right. to Kim. That's because of Kim. <laughs> well, it's because of me. I missed that. No, the multiphasic and that is one yeah. of the things that actually drives me nuts. People reading their reports and they don't know. Right. I mean, it's, I get that, but I don't think you explain it. They can understand, but man, sometimes it's true. I just true. had one today that sent me and I, you know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a clinician. So I, I, I can get away with be like, well, you know, but I, I know what I'm reading just from being in, in the experience, not in depth, but you know, and this patient kept asking me and it even, you know, I, I was just like, but what are your symptoms? What are your symptoms? Tell me your symptoms. Like, I'm not going to sit there and, and put it in your head that you have all these blockages if you're literally just walking two to three miles a day and you're doing great because I've had it where it suddenly they're like freaking out because they have blockages and then they, they stop walking afraid they're going to hurt their, themselves. And I'm like, I just well, that's where you get, get on you Dr. Get Google, on and do, Dr. Google tells us we're going to be dead in three to five years. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I'll leave you with this, Douglas. This is my, um, mm -hmm. it says, please do not confuse your Google search, Google search with my medical degree. <laughs> there you go. Yep. All right. Well, you may have, <laughs> there you go. You're on the links. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the links and uh, Brittany's got this. This is the slow, slowly pushing me out. I, I, I see where this is going. That's okay. I'm fine. It was a good, it was a good, good run, Kim. <laughs> Let's go check on that lady. We're gonna, I'm going to go check on that lady. Let's go. We're going to go check on her. That'd be great. Would love that. Right. And then.
hopefully um, we want an update at some point. So maybe we will. E even if um, we don't have it, we can actually figure out just a live. We can go live for 30 minutes, you know, with an update at any point. Like we could do it at any time. You know, that works for you guys. Whatever. We don't have to just do it during the show. I'm happy to, to provide an update. I, I want a positive update, but you know what? We have to provide a, 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 a real update. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. we will, we'll get you that. We're literally, we're, we're, you have all of our positive energy going. Everybody's cheering. We're, we're going to really go tell her. We can talk to her through it, right? Oh yeah. You can talk to so we'll go, uh, we're going to go tell her right now. Right now. All right. All right. See you guys. Bye, you guys. Thank you so much to you both. Seriously. Cheers. Have a great weekend. Stay Send tough. you guys love. Send in love. Bye. Bye. Okay, <laughs> so I'm looking at, um, I need to get um, Colin a, um, an update here um, for the show, mm -hmm. an updated thing for it. Um, but Joshua, so um. I just don't know, Josh, if I, I can't remember on that stream, I'm going to get rid of for, I'll try it one last time with you. If it goes down, then I'm going to, I'm just going to just, and I, I hate doing it because it's nothing off your back, but it's more work for me, which sucks is just doing the live myself. And I don't, I don't like doing that anymore. You're making me lazy. Josh. Hello. I've been listening. It's not listening. Okay, because our stream went down, Nancy. That's why we're. Can you hear me now? Oh, now I can hear you. No, I get it. Because I don't know if it's just because you know, sending it to you versus just doing it on my computer, which is the source of all the groups and the source, like I am the source of, even though mm -hmm. it's a re restream, behind the scenes with the wires or the audio waves or whatever it is, it has sure. to push it to you and then out. And, and I think it's going back and forth when I, you know, between my computer in a sense, I would imagine, and yours and it has too many areas that it might have to bounce off of. Sure. I mean, that kind of makes sense. You would think it would be, you know, it's the stream, but I'm just. Is that, uh, is that same buffer showing up? Um, I'm sharing my screen. Are you not seeing it? I am, but. Where did we find you found that buffer before you shared it with me last time? The monitor outgoing. See, this there it goes it. right there. And then hover over the buffer size on the right, the blue line going straight up. So, this is the one that's up. So, right down up there is where that's my personal page. Mm -hmm. And that's the peripheral artery disease community page and I don't know why they require more buffering right because that means they require more buffering correct? yeah so what I'm what what I'm curious to know is is as that buffer rate piles up the signal stops pushing um let's look at the session that had the last one I don't remember it happening during Hers, but it happened during this was the main one so it's that no see this one is different so it's still the peripheral artery disease community that seems to have the problem and on the right there that big long up upward tick oh see that uh, one see the way that one is different that's the one we saw last time. Yeah, that's the one we saw last time, but this time. So it's... It, it feels like Facebook is playing whack-a-mole with your stream. Yeah. So, you know what I'm going to do? 
is I'm going to go back to for tomorrow. Let's see if I can edit where it's streamed. Okay, I can. So I'm going to take this one. Well, hold on. I, I would hold on. How about you stream? You take over until we see it again. That way we know for certain that we're only changing one thing, right? We're changing the 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 source of the stream. And then if it happens again, then we'll we're for sure that they're playing whack-a-mole with your with your stream. Well, I just wish we didn't have to do it in a major event. That's my problem. Hundred percent agree. So that's why tomorrow, do I really want to risk it? Or do I want to just see if we can make as many safe bets as possible? And if we want to play with this, we could always do it during moving Monday with them. I just, I, I, are you working? I, I just, on Mondays is, I just didn't want to do, um, I'm already doing a live stream. I just, no one's going to be watching her on Monday. Hmm. It's a holiday, but if she wants to do it. Um. So I'll be watching. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm working. I work every day. <laughs> what? Um, we could do it during hers. Um, versus, yeah, I just don't want to do. I don't want to. I cannot. I put too much heart and soul into this mm -hmm. thing. I I just I I feel like at least right now. And then you know what also bums me out is that I like the clean look of having your OBS with the the the, the push of the stream coming up versus on, on ours when it comes up, it's like jumping between I can't have a graphic. Yeah, we can set OBS up on your machine. It's not terrible. Yeah, but I have to do it before like 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and I really just don't have sure. it. I get it. I'm so stressed right now in case you can't tell. I, I can't even keep up. And I, now I have, after I got, I got six boxes yesterday of those watches. And we have <laughs> no place to put that. them. <laughs> yeah, don't, no don't, don't laugh, Josh. Yeah. And we have, I, I had to actually start selling them to people. And now I created more work for myself so I have to go for every single one that is sold and we sold more than 20 because now in the next few days, I have to go on top of everything else. I have to go and individually ship every single one of those. Hmm. So I'm thinking I don't have anything to lose by taking it off of the other peripheral artery disease one for right now. Seeing if that helps. I can take it off my own personal page if we want it, but I don't think that's the problem. So I'll take it off of one Facebook page and see if that helps. I won't okay. push it in the groups. I Googled the word whack -a -mo. I was wondering what the word whack -a -mo meant. Oh, that old game whack a mole. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Kim's been having weird trouble just with Facebook. That I'm that just it makes me feel like there's somebody at Facebook who's just assigned to mess with Kim. Yeah, that's what I think too. And I yeah, even that's... have there, I even pay them twelve dollars a month to have an official page. Like, what are they doing to you? Um, oh, weirdness. So, yeah, they're they're literally um, they're screwing with our streams. So we've had now what two or three streams that have gone down mid because of Facebook. Hmm. And you so, know, you there's no there's no one to call. That's the unfortunate part about this. There's no one to call to say, "Hey, can you help me fix this so it doesn't happen." Mm-hmm. Well, you're an Emmy. Why don't you call Mark? Why don't you get hold of Mark Zuckerberg and tell him who you are and yeah. see if he can actually fix this for you? Hey, you're cute. 
Um, the only thing is also, Josh, in, in when we do the the streams, right? Um, I know you want to, you know, get up early, but the only thing is when I go back again and I watch the streams, it's like I'm waiting through twenty to thirty seconds of nothing. Yep. Waiting yep. for something to come up, and I don't. I know you don't want to cut it too close, but I would rather not have. Yeah. 10 seconds of just nothing before a video starts. I mean, I can say go as soon as we have an excellent connection. I just feel like that's rolling the dice. You know, waiting like on this show, it just seems like it, it's... Um... Oh, on Saturdays, I start the stream a minute before he starts the countdown. I know, that's just a long time. Are you... Is, so, uh, like... Monday with the Marsh Marsha mm -hmm. and Wednesday, y'all having the same problem or is it just Saturdays? We've only had a couple of them happen. We've only had it a couple times. It's just recently. Um, and it's also we also moved to where I'm not pushing the stream. It's over on his side, and it might just be too many. So behind the scenes. I covered IT for a while, CIO Network, and this is the extent to my knowledge, um, is that there's a bunch of pinging that goes around, and the whole idea is you want to reduce the amount of pinging that's happening between networks and this and that, and I have a feeling that with Facebook, because my my it's it's literally linked to Facebook through my account maybe here on my computer in my cloud that it's having to do too many pings to that makes I'm sense that makes some sense yes right that it does but then also this is how i understand it um i'm pulling the call signal in through zoom and then i'm pushing through a third party uh splitter which is restream. And so with my with the key that she provides me, the only signal getting pushed to restream is mine. Okay. Right? And so right. then it splits out and goes to all of the other Facebook pages and YouTube. Okay? okay. On, on other events that are not using restream, I can turn the... Um, the YouTube channel on and off with restream. As soon as you hit go start streaming, it toggles that for you. Now, if my show fails and OBS is still pushing signal, YouTube is still receiving whatever my cover page is and I can reconnect my call or what have you, and then re go and still continue pushing signal to YouTube. But for some, somehow with restream, when that, buffer blowback hits it stops sending it across the board and it so also that, that's across the whole thing then yeah okay okay yeah see tan we moved our, we had one at 10 i'm on the board at 10 we have one that goes out we moved it to another day and it fixed everything i don't know I, we could never explain that but we just happened to do it and it we never had issues again yeah. So a buffer, though, that's that's a signal to me that somebody has shut the ingest server gate. Right. So so signal from restream is getting pushed into the Facebook uh -huh. and Facebook has closed that door. Now. And so now we, we also but we also happening. know she had some trouble with Facebook. And are they still limiting her? algorithm and all of that because of the trouble that they were trying to cause her to begin with. Remember that? Yeah, they don't want me to stream to the groups anymore. I think that it's part of it might be just that they don't want people to um, they, they really don't want people to stream on face. Uh, they want people to use Facebook to stream. And so um, we've already lost so many viewers from our group we've lost so many because we're not streaming we used to get literally up to 1200 people josh watching us online live 
in our groups. And we, we just don't get them at all anymore. At all. Like they don't mm. even watch this stuff afterwards because we're not streaming live into the group. We would get so much engagement. We're just not getting it on YouTube. So while we're building the audience there, people just are not. They're allowing you to do this, but if you went to their stream, would it be different? No, I mean, I, I'm talking about something different in, in terms of this, Douglas, that the what what Josh wants us to do is he wants us to go to, to YouTube and have and drive people to go watch a stream on YouTube and then subscribe and then get notified when our streams are live. But our patient base are not doing that. It's too much for them. If it, if it isn't in our feed and flowing through our feed, which is what I was trying to do today, um, which is hard for me. And maybe it's something, you know, Josh, if, if we can get you into our group, and then if you wouldn't mind taking it from what you have to do is you have to take it from our Facebook page on the way to my heart and you can share it into groups you belong to. And when you do that, you know, if you, you know, have the first 30 seconds that you go live before that, you know, and you push the stream, then you can actually end up getting on. Or I can maybe, if I remember, you could try this tomorrow is as soon as you push it, I can get on and get catch that notification and push it live into the one group. And then it's streaming from YouTube, from YouTube, right, to Facebook or from Restream into the groups. But I have to physically share it. Hmm. I don't know. I can always share the link for YouTube and have it scheduled to go live, but does it actually go live in the group at the time? It just thought that, that became so much. It, it literally, I mean, trying to schedule everything has been hell. Yeah. Your big month, big month. Yep. So I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. So what do you have going tomorrow? So we have an interview. What time is that interview? Um, um, 11 a.m. That's central? That would be 1 o'clock your time. Who's the interview with him? Um, he's cool. He's an interventional radiologist. He's our interventional radiologist of the year. Mahmoud Rasavi, MD. I don't, I don't remember seeing a thing for that tomorrow. I'm looking. That's just to, that's today. I don't remember seeing or getting one for that. Mm -hmm. Me neither. I didn't get that one, Kim. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I was trying to just do my best. I there are some I didn't even I don't even know if I added Josh in one. <laughs> I, did, I still have a million more to do. I haven't even gotten all of them done, so I have to get those done. I'm gonna have to jump off because I have to edit the the thing today too for the show because it's our sponsor. So I just have to get that done. So I'll just go ahead and, and edit it, Josh, for this one, because I have to, I have the zoom and the All other right. way we can do it. Right. So All I might right. as well just do it. Um, Cause I have to do it today. Um, Douglas, you are on it. I did send it to you. 
Melissa, the way to my heart. Ooh. All right. Well, you know where to find me, Kim. Thank you. Sorry, I don't. I just don't know what's what's wrong. I don't even know what's wrong with my my prompter. I'm a little perplexed here. I don't know why my prompter is not working. It cost me thirty five dollars for this stupid remote. It might work now. I finally figured out. It's it's just. I I think it just um. They don't tell you how to pair these things and it says to pair and then you try to pair. So I think that they're now connected to each other. So I think I can go now to teleprompter here. I mean, it didn't work too bad, did it, with me? I mean, did it look like I was reading? No, no. it still doesn't look like you're reading. Oh, well, that's good. Um. Use this device as, as remote to, can, to connect. Tap on the button, control this device, and choose use Bluetooth option. I did. It says it's ready to pair, but I already paired it. This is what you get when you do cheap technology. Um, and I still need to get a microphone, and I don't know which microphone to get. I was thinking that maybe um, maybe it'd be better for me to just get, in a sense, a boom mic, one that comes over so it's above here. That'll work. So if that you're going to check... Seen. I was going to say, if you're going to check boom mics, one of the best websites to buy them from is going to be B&H. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's freaking expensive. Man, That's why one of the things you can do, which I've learned some people do, is you look at them, but you don't buy that model. That you, you find the model you want on there, but you go to your Amazon or your other retailer to see if you can get it at a cheaper rate. Yeah. Well, can you tell me which one to get? Well, for boom mics, you got to give me two seconds to look up, but there was one I think would work for you quite well. Because I, I can't have it in the shot is the problem. Mm -hmm. No, that part I understand. There was there was one I remember seeing that was a per. I was personal and good for uh, desktop setups. I just got to find it real quick. Give me two seconds. You only have two seconds, though. Excuse me. Give me 222 seconds. One, two. Oh, oh never mind. <laughs> okay. Wow, this is taking forever to get this stuff working. Oh my God. Oh, I see Kim's on. Kim decided to join us. Yeah, Kim, it only shows 35 minutes. We had a crash. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to delete that and we're going to just get another one up today because of our, our, our sponsor. Um, I don't want them to see that we crashed on our first day. That just really kind of sucks. But they're going to go on. Huh? You want me to delete it now? Yeah, that's, I, I think I would. Yeah, no, thank you. I might need to delete it, though, on all the pages, all, our Facebook and everything, because that just looks so bad. Um, I'm kind of thankful that they didn't join live. Or else I would have gotten a call. I don't like those calls. Do you think? Do you think it's just you, or do you know of anybody else that has the same issues? That's a, we're 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 the problem with streaming is that I'm we everybody uses different stuff. Okay. And we have a different situation going on, and because of and I'm not even happy with how we're doing it now because Facebook. Um, it, it's really screwed us over. Um, we're not getting the views on YouTube at all. And we're, but we're getting more subscribers, but um, we're not getting the views on the show at all. 
like it's the least watched of most of the stuff that's out there that we're doing. Um, and I even have it listed as a podcast that people can follow and subscribe to where we were getting the actual views and the listeners was directly through the group. Everyone was tuning in every Saturday. We had a bunch, remember, we had all kinds of people yep, coming yep, in yep, and, yep. and into the thing. We would have like, you know, anywhere between 10 and 20 people with every single I, show. I do remember, yeah. Coming in. And now we have, and we're blessed. I mean, we have a few of you guys that are dedicated, but we don't have anyone anymore. Like it, there's there's hardly any engagement at all. Um, for so the how, show. how would we how, how would we promote that more? How could we like Nancy and I and Kim and and uh, how could we promote that more if we were to get that out there more? I mean, I it was just easier because it would it would broadcast and people would look for the stream every Saturday, um, and and they would be able to engage live. I mean, I can try doing it again. It's just, it's so much more work for me to have to then, you know, on, on top of scheduling and you think it'd be, oh, well, it's just one more, but then there's always one. But I, what I'm saying, is people. there, is there a link you can create that we can yeah, put out you, there for you? The thing is, is that you have to have a way of doing it. You can't just throw up a link and do it. You have to, and I'll still have to write it for you in order to do that, if that makes sense. Unless you know how to, if if you could set it up, Douglas, to where you're on the Way to My Heart's Facebook page, this would be the only way to do it. If you were on, and it would have to be every stream, if you're on our Facebook page, not the group, but the Way to My Heart's Facebook page, and I can actually add you as a content person on there, if you are on the page and as soon as Josh says, I'm pushing the stream, you'd get a notification. You click on the notification. You have to get out of the weird. The thing is, I, it's hard for me to teach you how to navigate it because I still can't do it 100% every time. I have to fiddle around. But you have to get to a point where it's on the page and you click share. And then it pops <laughs> up with a few options. And then you click group. So you hit click share. And then it goes in a group and then it lets you select the groups. But when you do that, you have to also put a message at the top that says, you know, watch our, you know, come join us live. Okay. You know, watch the stream. If you want to join the, the, the in-studio audience, here's that link or else, you know, feel free to comment below. And then what you do is you, you could pick the groups and, and you just say share in the different groups and it'll have a list of your groups that you can okay. share it in, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Kim, so, we, so I, do, I don't, I'm not good at explaining. And so you might have to finagle and figure some of it out on your own because I have to kind of still figure it every time. But if you want, I'll add you as such and see if you can figure it out because yeah, then yeah. you could actually share it in every single group live when we are live. And that would increase the number of people that are watching. Yeah. You know, um, Kim, the, the link, the link you have to click through into the description of the event for the link because Facebook does that deliberately again, as Josh and I were talking about that it hides the link. It says, do you have a, an external link and you put the external link in there and it doesn't show anyone the external link. So I have to put the link in the description for you guys to find. Yeah. So, I did the same thing, Kim. I just typed in, in Zoom and it comes up. It comes up. Well, why don't we work? I, I'm willing to work on that. Let's, let's see if we can do that because 
I put I put out a message just to people to get on YouTube and go to our page and, and read our stuff. I talked to Peter yesterday. He was on there. I said, don't forget to let the commercial play. He said, I'm waiting on that. I said, let the commercial play. Peter from Naples, Florida. Him and I talked yesterday, and he was on the YouTube page. Yeah, that's I, cool. I don't know if this is making sense, but I've been getting on by just going to the events page and getting on that way because it used to be on there, you know, would come right up on the Facebook page and I could just jump on and I can't do it anymore. I think exactly. That's the problem. But that, and that's because, number one, and this is the primary reason that Facebook is not allowing us to go live directly in the group. So we can't. It no longer allows us to stream directly in there. It's eliminated groups. Is there a way to get a message out to all the members and say, at this time, this is what's going to happen? Because I know Douglas does send things out and just say, go to the events page and go on to the, I mean, just temporarily to get it fixed. I mean. We do. We do. It, it actually, the events go out to notifications. The problem is, is that, you know, when you have 6,000 people in the group and you have, you know, 30 to 40 posts a day, Facebook mm -hmm. is, and the more I'm posting and the more Douglas is posting, you know, people are just ignoring our posts because they just see them all the time. Yeah. If they're not strategic posts with the right hashtags and, you know, the right formulation, people are just, they're tuning them out because there's just too many notifications coming from our group now every day, which it's kind of a good thing, but it's a bad thing for our stream. You know, yes. and that's why it was so much better because usually before Facebook would prioritize our stream in the group. Mm -hmm. And then I could actually go in there and I could feature it right then and there. And it was right. easy. Now what we have to do is we're prioritizing YouTube and we're not, and because of it, and because it, we just, we can't depend on Facebook. Facebook did this to Zynga. Do you remember that company, Zynga? Yeah. That, um, that was the video game, Farmville. So they built Farmville. Zynga is the company. They built Farmville. They built Zynga all around completely Facebook and delivering on the Facebook platform. And then thinking that Facebook, you know, would always be there. But then in that, and also they were think, hoping that people would jump off of Facebook and go to their own platform and try and do independently. And as soon as Facebook was like, shit, here's a multi-billion dollar company um, that is built around Facebook. Um, we're going to do shit ourselves. And so they literally came up with new rules that, that sent Zynga into a full implosion. Mm. And it went down. I mean, in a very bad way because they could no longer deliver on Facebook in the same way. So that's what Facebook is doing to us is they don't Government want us control. streaming on YouTube, right? They don't want us streaming on YouTube. They want everything going through Facebook. So they want us to stream live using their technology. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't know if, maybe Josh can answer this. I don't know if I can have two stream keys, if I can put a stream key through Facebook and let it just automatically go live there and use the same stream key for, you know, going, you know, through your OBS. But um, I don't think that's possible. I think Facebook probably has it completely locked down. Damn, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Yep. So, and they're not you know, you do bring up a good soon. question though um yeah. in the event that you you remove the YouTube port well no because I still need I still need to be able to push to to YouTube yeah. yeah we just don't get I'm looking at we don't get any views on YouTube like maybe one or two so what you're saying Josh you think if you if you if you don't don't do YouTube, Facebook may pick up because they're on, they think they're on. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think that at all. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, okay. The, the Facebook buffer thing is 
what I is that's the biggest indication that some somehow signal is being stopped processing there and okay. it just okay. backflows. Um, but I was going to say, Sorry if, to if I could, Kim, I just need to double check YouTube something. Do you have a microphone at your house right now, or do you need a boom microphone itself? Because I did find a boom mic, but I didn't know if you also had the setup for it already or not, or if you had the microphone itself or not. Um, you know, I have a bunch of microphones all over the freaking place, but my place is such a disaster. I'm going to need to <laughs> clean and go through things. So I just thought it was so much easier. Douglas knows me very well. I saw my suitcase. So um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's just easier to just buy a microphone and set up. Okay. What is your budget for mic and setup stuff? It needs to be the best bang, clearest bang for the buck because I have no money. Okay, so I, I just put to give you a heads in. up of what I found here. If I were to send it to you, it would be about sixty bucks. The company name is Paulson. Paulson does fairly good stuff for what we call um like professional hobbyists stuff. So they tend to be good bang for buck, especially if you're just going to go and get what you need to get. You're not going to have too much interference. The only thing about them, which is what I tell people, is if you want to do more professional shots, like if you were to do stuff with movies or video audio audio stuff at times that's not stagnant, that might have an issue. So our show will be fine. But if you needed to go on the run as if you were a reporter or anything of the sort and get someone right then and there, you may have issues just because it is not the greatest when it comes to the pickup uh the pickup style when it has other elements coming to it. Yes, they do have things to help lower and keep a general good sound to it, but that's the only thing I would say. Kim, I made a donation yesterday. Use the money. You are not supposed to make donations. It just I cuz then I use it back on you, my friend. No, you get your microphone. Use it for the program because we need it for the program so it works right. So go look in there and use it for that. I know. And Kim, anytime, if you need anything like that, let us know. So maybe we no, can chip in, right, Douglas? No, yeah, no joke. I mean, I we're, part of, we're a part yeah. of this too. I mean. You guys are so cute. So <laughs> thank you. So, so what there is, is some is, money in there. Okay, hold on. And thank you so much, Douglas and, and Nancy. But so what what is that limitation again for it? I mean, I just I don't like things that have limitations, and I always test their limitations. Well, so the general idea with the limitation for it is that this will not be something that you run and gun with. So for example, if you're someone who has a DSLR and or you have any kind of movie kind of uh boom mic and you need to move very quickly or move very fast with it to do it it's not the type it's not the type of hardware that's strong like that to keep the sound but if you are going to be stagnant like you have it in place whether it's outside or indoor you keep it generally stationary it's going to pick up sound quite well you just need to have it set up to where you want it to be i've seen pulsons be in action when it comes to uh, still shots or when it comes to like interviews or anything of the sort and they work very well but when it comes to like sweeping shots or when it comes to things that have to do a lot of action has to pick up things like that that's when it gets a little wonky because it has to be moved around too much and it doesn't have the i'm not gonna say the girth but it doesn't have the weight to be able to handle that and still pick up good audio so colin can i ask you a question go for it so if we if we were to step up one or two from there, so if we were to get a little bit better one for her, that we're like if she's out somewhere and is doing the show on a Saturday, you know, the what would you suggest then? There was one I saw. Generally speaking, if you're going just by name standards, you would go Rhodes because Rhodes is always going to be reliable. But I have one in mind that I think you can do. Give me two seconds to get the name back up for you real quick. I heard this over and over again.
Yeah, Douglas, if you can do anything, I mean, we could all chip in something. And I mean, I'm I'm doing this LP uh, LP two thing uh, on their support group, and this thing is exploding because I'm seeing all kinds of people now with peripheral artery disease, and I'm telling them to come to our site. You know, so I'm trying to. So the one that I'm looking at right now, right, is a road. It's a road one. It's about the one I said was about 59, call it 60. This one is going to be 99, call it 100, right? So it's a road vid mic go to H ultra compact analog USB camera mount shotgun microphone. That's the full name of it. But it's basically a road shotgun microphone. So it would be better than the one you were suggesting. But will it sound hollow or will it sound crisp? No, no, no. When you usually get roads, you get them for the audio fidelity. It will sound crisp. It will capture it and it can capture sounds further than what you were expecting. That's one of the good things. Because um, I want to sound radio quality for, because I have to do all these voiceovers. I can't do any voiceovers right now. If Well, first things First, if you want radio quality with your microphone, that's perfectly that's perfectly fine. This would this would this and the pulse one will be fine. The only thing is the atmosphere. I would say if you're outside with this and you want to still have radio quality, you'll have a little interference here and there because there's just outside there's gonna be noises, but the roads will keep you clear and the pulse will generally keep you fine. Just no one can run into that one. That's the only thing I would say would be the main difference. Also the roads is a little easier to is a little easier to equip to different equipment just because it's a little bit shorter, stockier. While the Paulson by itself is not fine; it's just a long stick. So if you don't have the equipment to hold it correctly, or you don't have it in the right spacing, it's not going to work. But it, for the roads, because it's smaller, it's easier to put on a camera that's DSLR. It's easier to put through your phone if you have a strong enough phone to do it. It's easy enough to put on an actual. Uh, interview camera or one of the larger cameras that use at a studio it's easier to mount onto those things as well all right kim so there's another 50 in there so get what you need to get kim Douglas, you're not oh stop 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 can you put a a link in here to an amazon or should i get it off of bnh the main thing i'm going to do right now is i'm going to email you the the name of it I can email you the link that I found it, but I'm just going to email you the name and you can find out where you can get the best bang for buck. So Kim and Nancy and me, if y'all want put go to the way to my heart webpage and donate a little bit. I There's another 50 in there, Kim, get what you need to do this the right way. Okay. Oh my gosh. You have to do that. Douglas Salisbury. You know, I'm going to smack you one. So there's a, I know now there's a hundred in there, at least a hundred. So, so Douglas, the way to my heart webpage, just go uh-huh. on, just go on the way to my heart webpage oh, and up in the right corner. It says donate right on the front. It says donate. And then you can make a donation there and it okay. goes straight to Kim. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll do that when I get off. We got to keep Kim going. So there, there's there's going to be some in there for you, Kim. Do do your do your little bit of your research and get what we can help you get. Okay, so that it works better for you and it makes it easier for you. Okay. Oh, well, thank you. You guys are too much. Did you see what Kim said? Um, I haven't looked yet. I'm trying to look at the Yeah, I wish I could get more, but when I get paid social security, I can. <laughs> but I will. I guys to do this. I sold uh, another cross. I got more. I got more work now. I don't know how I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do, but. But you give so much to us, Kim. You always give so much to us. Let us give back to you sometimes. I'm not a very good receiver. But there's our hotline. No. Sure, Swingy?
Douglas, if I have any trouble sending it, I'll message you. <laughs> I'm not real techie. But I have PayPal. Um, I think Josh left this. No, I'm listening in. Just waiting for you to give me the clear to go. Well, I don't have to tell you to go. I just was going to ask you um, what you think. I'm waiting for um, for hey um, Colin, can you put it in the in the chat there what it is so Josh can see it too? No problem. See which one? Because I'm just and I was thinking that you know, I just didn't want to get just a name, but I have these blue mics, but the problem with the blue mic is that it's also better if it's up here like this, and I don't want to have anything in my face. So I want it up higher so that it's out, out of my range here. But I want, if I turn my head, I don't want it to go away. If you were to still use that blue mic, then I will, I'm going to send it in the chat as well and email as well you would probably want a certain mount that can extend. Like for example, this boom mic mount I saw that extends, it can go between 18 to 36 inches out for the extension for you. So depending on how you angle it, you can have it still out of frame, out of view, but still have it uh, relatively, still have it the way you want it to, angled the way you want it to. Also, it's a desk clamp type of mount. So you clamp it to the desk where you want it to, and then you extend from there. Did you put it in there, Bergen? So, Josh, I'm trying to look it up on my on Amazon. I see it. What do you What do you think? Of it? Hmm. Wow, they have all price levels for those. Here's the $99 Ultra Compact. Yeah, this doesn't look like it comes with the... Uh, it's it's just the mountable portion at the bottom of the boom mic. Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, it's mounted on something, which usually free delivery tomorrow. Well, it's ten dollars cheaper if I went to Tuesday. Um, I wouldn't know which mount to get because in the frequently bought things together, it doesn't have the actual desk mount that goes with it. But I also wonder if I should have one that has the little, um, okay, so there's this. Will that mount into mm. the, uh, the second thing he posted is uh, boom arms and table clamps. Douglas, did you get it? Douglas? Uh, Douglas looks like he dropped off the call. Okay. All right, Kim, I'm going to go, okay? Sounds good. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Okay. And hope you get everything straightened out. I'll, I'll see you again soon. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll be on tomorrow at 11 a.m. Okay. Or I guess
So now I'm having problems with this stupid teleprompter. It's not really anything. Hello, Douglas. Hello. Okay. Hello. Where are you at, Stephanie? Oh my God, my grandmother literally lived on Robert Toller Drive at the top right next to Boyd Park. Josh, from what I'm reading on both the specs, it looks like the Rode mic well, itself will come of its own uh, shock mount that should be second. able to attach to the mic arm for the boom mic. I, I would double check.